This is an introduction to linearizing equations. You'll learn how to linearize, why to linearize, and how to handle uncertainties. Suppose we want to calculate the density of a marble. We need the mass and the radius. If the radius varies, we could measure it in several places and use the average. If we had several marbles of the same material, we could average both mass and radius to calculate density. But this would make the big marble dominate the result. What about if we calculated the density for each and averaged them? That would make the small marble dominate the result. Can we do better? Density is given by the mathematical relationship between mass and radius. A graph is a way of showing a mathematical relationship. The graph of mass versus radius isn't linear. On a straight line graph, if we know the slope and the y-intercept and their uncertainties, we know everything important about the relationship between the variables. If we can turn a relationship between two variables from one that isn't linear to one that can be plotted as a linear graph, then we have linearized the equation. This has several advantages. There are two kinds of quantities in any equation, constants and variables. A variable is a number that's different for each data point. Combining constants gives new constants. Combining variables gives new variables. Combining constants and variables gives new variables. From the example of the density of a marble, the original equation has two variables, mass and radius, and four constants, 3, 4, pi, and the density. We can rearrange this to get one variable on the left side of the equation. So if we plot mass versus radius cubed, then the slope will be 4 thirds pi times the density. The y-intercept should be 0. Since the slope should be 4 thirds pi times the density, the density should be just 3 times the slope over 4 pi. The density comes just from the slope. Mass and radius are gone. Another option comes from taking logarithms of both sides of the equation following a similar procedure. In this case, the slope should equal a constant, 3, and the density is incorporated into the y-intercept. Taking the exponential of the y-intercept and then rearranging gives the density. Again, mass and radius are no longer visible in the calculation of the density. Only the y-intercept matters. If we look at the two graphs, we should see both giving straight lines, but with other differences. Keep an eye on the error bars in both graphs. Determining uncertainties in the graphical variables and the quantities calculated from the slope and the y-intercept follow the usual rules. You may have to refresh your memory about how to do uncertainty calculations. As mentioned earlier, different linearizations show differences in the uncertainties. In one case, the uncertainties get bigger as the data values get bigger. 
In the other case, the uncertainties get smaller as the data values get bigger. There are a few important points to remember about linearization.